Hi there, there has been a reckoning amongst my knife collection. At the time of making this video, whilst still waiting for things to arrive, the only knives left in my folding knife collection are this knife, the Falkniven U2, this knife, the Cold Steel American Lawman, and this knife, which is part of a multi-tool, the Leatherman Skeletal CX. I have been ruthless. Also still retaining, and not going anywhere, the D2 LT Wright Patriot. However, apart from Swiss Army knives, which I still have a few, and cheapo knives which aren't really ever going to be sold, because they have no real value money-wise, like Open L's and Victorinoxes and things like that, and, you know, basic Victorinoxes, these are it. These are the ones that survived the cut. So I'm just going to do a long-term follow-up on this knife, the Falkniven U2. This knife is a traditional folding knife and I chose to keep this one because it has a lot going for it. I like this for the same reason that I like my Victorinox Infantry GMT watch. My Victorinox Infantry GMT watch has a very cheap um, but very practical watch band. It's a NATO strap, it cost me $15 and it's made of nylon. However, the face, the mechanics, um, the sapphire crystal on the front, all completely premium. You get a very similar thing with this knife. You get a handle that is absolutely utilitarian. It is simple, it has a couple of little swells, and it is made of a very basic material, fiberglass reinforced nylon. It is when you move to the blade that you get where all the energy has, and all the money has quite rightly been put. So you get a very ergonomic handle. There's just nothing really to say about the handle, it's just comfortable. It's a bit cool to the touch on the colder days, but it does the job. You can grip it hard, you can grip it multiple different angles, and it is certainly comfortable. However, the real star is this super gold powder steel blade, which over my testing of this knife and the previous Falcon Newman folding knife, I had the U4, which I upgraded to this knife. It is truly a super steel, it is an old super steel, you know, early 2000s super gold powder still started to be seen um, but it is most certainly a very very high performing steel up there easily if not better than CTS XHP and matching the ZDP 189 of the Spyderco Dragonfly which yes has left my collection Spyderco Dragonfly just was not doing it for me it was between the two knives this one and the Dragonfly filled the same role Coin pocket carry, high speed steel, plastic handles. This one just won out because it is more comfortable to use. I like the blade shape better, I like the look better, and it just seems to fit me a little bit better. And I think I even like the steel better as well. So what do we get? We get a nice two and a half inch drop point blade. Very, very nice shape. It's about three millimeters thick. It's convex ground down to a traditional V bevel. So the convex grind helps with the slicing and the traditional V ground bevel makes it so it can cut well and also sharpen fairly easily as well. The steel is super hard, well, fairly hard, anyway, 62 on the Rockwell scale, and it stays sharp for a long, long time. It's been probably stropped is about as much as I've ever had to do to it and it's still just shaving hair, slicing paper, doing really, really well. It's a semi-stainless steel, I would suggest, because the edge does tarnish a little bit if you're not careful. What does tarnished is always just buffed off with my strop and some compound. The sides of this knife being laminated, lower grade stainless steel have kept these stains off. The ZDP of the Spyderco Dragonfly that I had would tarnish fairly quickly and I was at the point where I didn't like to use it on anything that was you know, wet or food, food related because I would probably just forget to clean it and then I'd end up with a little orange, very superficial rust spot. And every time I'd go, ooh, my, you know, my $120 worth of ZDP and that little triangular leaf shape was in jeopardy. So this is a low maintenance, but just as high performing still. It's a very light little knife. It weighs nothing. You don't even notice you've got it on you. It sits very well at the bottom of the pocket and I do like this nylon because 
even compared to the Falcon even U4, I think they've done a different texturing to it. Not as smooth, so it doesn't seem to collect as many scratches as the um, Falcon even U4 did in my pocket. If you look at the knife, um, I think it looks just about perfect. It's a very traditional looking knife. You, if this was a bone handle, you'd think it was made by Case or someone similar to that. Very, very traditional looking. Um, exposed little tang there is probably the only little thing I'd knock against it, but then in the same little angular way, I'd say it actually looks okay. It's not terrible, it's just probably something that you'd rather was you know, nice and smooth, so it just wasn't a catching point. It's a lock back knife. No bells and whistles, no triad, nothing like that. Lock back works well enough. It certainly has decent lock up. However, the one thing that has surfaced over the use is this. This is not this is a new thing. This isn't always been doing this where when you cut against something, and I'm not gonna put my finger on to cut it, but say I'm pushing against something hard. Click is the knife sort of just pushing a little bit further back against the liner. There's no real movement, it's just the click. So that is happening, and I guess it's probably just the case of just wear, because I'm always opening and closing the knife. So it's just wearing just a little bit and um, just making a bit of a click sound. Certainly nothing too bothersome there though. So overall, I kept this because probably I like the look the most. I also love the functionality. It was more comfortable than the Delica and I think between these three knives I've definitely got everything to to get by until my new ones get here. New ones, should I tell you which they are? Or should I have spoilers? Okay, my new knives that I'm getting, I'm getting a Benchmade 940 because it's a knife I've always wanted because of how it looks. Uh, it's got S30V steel, which is good. Somewhat of a um, thinking about replacing my paramilitary 2, but not wanting to buy a paramilitary 2. So I've got a Benchmade 940, which is probably the sister knife in terms of ultimate three and a half inch blade knives, like the Grail knives or the, the ones that every collector is probably gonna have to have in their collection. I think it'd be a nice companion to the American lawman when I want something less brutish. The next knife I'm getting is a Spyderco Native 5 in S110V. So my rationale behind that was I've sold my Delica, my Delica is gone, along with the Delica. Dragonfly 2 is gone and my Paramilitary 2 was lost when I went on my kayak trip a while ago. I looked at the Native 5 and I felt it had a bit of everything that those three knives have. It has the super steel of the Dragonfly without the uncomfortable handle of the Dragonfly just too small for my hands. Um, it has the ergonomics of the Delica and the paramilitary, has the forward finger choil of the paramilitary, the size though of the Delica, a little bit smaller, so it's somewhere in the middle size wise. So I just thought it was a very good representation of the essential Spyderco lines, all run into one knife, so I really couldn't say no. And I'm really curious to see how those um, proper bleeding edge super steels 110V actually does. So. Let's um, look forward to that all together. And I've also ordered something from Kaiser, Kaiser Knives, the Chinese knife company, one of the high-end Chinese knife companies though. Um, it's called the A3, or the V3 it is. Uh, it's a VG10 thumb stud uh, line lock folder. So just got that out of curiosity more than anything, something that I don't really see other reviews on. So um, I look forward to getting out of hand as well. So while the knife collection is small now, it shall definitely return, just with some higher end stuff, a few other higher end things. And after that it'll be the Spyderco Mantra, probably the Mantra 2, and then the um, Lion Steel TRE, they're the other ones on the list for this year. So look forward to those fellas. Anyway, Falcon Even U2, long term thoughts, and general knife collecting discussion. There we are. See you in the next video chaps, and chapettes.